Sydney Harbor sits along the islands, coves, and waterways of Port Jackson below me. Port Jackson attaches to the Tasman Sea, which is part of the South Pacific Ocean out there. What a truly epic location to tell the story of how the gospel reached this part of the world. On August 26th, 1768, the HMS Endeavor set sail from England under the command of Captain James Cook, an accomplished navigator, astronomer, and cartographer, a guy who made maps. Cook and his crew of 94 men were instructed to set sail to Tahiti, where they would observe and record the transit of the planet Venus across the sun. After that, Cook had orders to search for Terra Australis Incognita, the unknown southern land. Oh, come on! The Endeavour successfully reached Tahiti and recorded the transit of Venus on June 3, 1769. Then Captain Cook sailed on to explore the so-called Southern Ocean. He first discovered and mapped New Zealand before traveling further west. On April 19, 1770, Cook spotted the east coast of Australia. He named this land New South Wales and claimed it for the British Crown. James Cook went on to survey about 500 miles of coastline throughout Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands. While Cook didn't discover these lands, the accuracy and extent of his charts and maps were revolutionary for that time in history. In the 20 years before Captain James Cook first landed in Australia, the population of London had doubled. Jobs disappeared, unemployment soared, and poverty skyrocketed. Large parts of London were truly nasty, filled with trash, disease, and death. It was a scene only hinted at in Charles Dickens' novels. And crime, from petty thefts to heinous murders, became the new normal in the streets. All of this came about just as Captain Cook brought Australia to the attention of the British monarchy. Some viewed Cook's discoveries as divine timing. You see, since 1597, British law required the transfer of criminals to remote lands. In a statute called an act for punishment of rogues, vagabonds, and sturdy beggars. The government declared that offenders, quote, shall be banished out of this realm and shall be conveyed to such parts beyond the seas as shall be assigned by the Privy Council. To return to England after being sent abroad meant death by hanging. It was this law that allowed British officials to dump convicts on the shores of Virginia in the 1600s. But in the 1700s, American independence put an end to that practice, and felons once again plagued the streets of London. The rising crime rates in England made Parliament desperate for another solution. After much debate and with much pleading against the idea by Christians like William Wilberforce, the British finally decided to solve its crime surge by sending shiploads of criminals here to Australia. There was no hiding the intent. England was shipping its crisis abroad. Although the British strategy for transplanting its crime was controversial, it was the beginning of the Western settlement of Australia. It was also the first time Christianity found its way to this remote part of the world. The first of more than 160,000 British convicts arrived on the shores of Australia in January of 1788. They voyaged under the command of Captain Arthur Philip, who many say pulled off a miracle. He sailed 11 ships more than 1,500 miles over 252 days and didn't lose a single vessel. Although 48 people died along the way, this was considered a merciful number given the cramped quarters, poor nutrition, and lack of medicine and hygiene. The Reverend Richard Johnson and his wife Mary were the only Christian clergy to accompany this first convict colony here to Australia. Johnson would be the sole chaplain to the 790 men, women, and children who survived the voyage from England. 
Amazing Grace hymn writer John Newton was so excited by the possibility of a base for Christian missionary work in the Pacific that he called Reverend Johnson the, quote, patriarch of the Southern Hemisphere. What awaited these first Western settlers in Australia was one of the most challenging places on the planet. Terra Australis, or the Land of the South, was a massive continent stretching 2,000 miles from north to south, 2,400 miles from east to west, and surrounded by 12,000 miles of coastline. It was a land of long summer droughts and deserts so hot that explorer James Sturt said they were like the entrance into hell. It was a tough life for the Reverend Johnson and his wife. They lived in a hut their first year and their first child died during birth. Yet Johnson was undaunted in his mission. He wrote, I am sorry to see so little good yet done amongst the prisoners. They prefer their lust before their souls. Yea, most of them would sell their souls for a glass of grog. So blind, so foolish, so hardened are they. It is my duty to preach to all, to pray for all, and to admonish everyone. 